So in our last video, we covered the primary drought process. We also talked about preference points. Um, and so we talked to a lot of hunters who are interested in a group application. Uh, so in this video, we'd like to talk about the pros, cons. There's a lot of confusing aspects to group application. So we want to kind of clarify some of those and so it allow you to determine if this is a good option for you or not. All right. Yeah, group applications may not be a great choice for everybody that's out there. We do happen to have a lot of non-resident hunters come to Colorado. We love to have, have hunters come in um, to Colorado and hunt. It's a, it's a great opportunity. Um, but, right, they're coming in, they got a large group, they're sharing gear, um, they, maybe they want to apply as a group. One of the things to keep in mind if you apply as a group, um, it's simply either everyone goes or nobody goes, right? It boils down to that. So you apply as a group. Um, there, there's a couple other little things here and there that um, uh, you, you need to know as well. Um, group application, when, when you apply, um, everyone in the group gets a license. Everyone in the group can go hunt, but that doesn't mean that you're allowed to party hunt. So in Colorado, party hunting is, is illegal. And party hunting is just simply where, uh, where a group of hunters will pool their licenses. Maybe some people have bull tags, some people have cow tags. And well, I, I, we'll just make sure we shoot one of them and then you can put your tag on it or your license on it. We don't allow that in Colorado, that's illegal. So, let's, uh, let's talk about kind of the process um, to get into, uh, to, to apply as a group. So first off, um, a group has to choose a group leader. That group leader needs to apply first. When they apply, they've got a couple of check boxes. One of the check boxes they got to apply right at almost at the beginning of their application. It's going to ask them, uh, "Are you applying as a group?" Click yes. And then there's going to be a little box that says, "Are you the group leader?" You click yes. That group leader um, provides his or her CID to the rest of the group. That group leader also provides all of the hunt codes that that he or she entered in as a group leader for the one, two, three, four choices. The group then, after the group leader applies, the group then can apply. And of course they got, you know, the box, they have to check, I'm applying as a group. They are not the group leaders. So they will have an opportunity to enter the group leader's CID number in the box and they proceed on. One of the challenges with these group applications is all it takes is one person in the group to apply incorrectly. So that group leader and the group needs to communicate through this. So the, uh, everyone has to enter the exact same hunt codes for first, second, third, fourth choice. The only exception is, is if there's, let's say you're, you're hunting elk, if there's a bull tag and cow tags available, but it's the same season, it's the same method of take, right? Everything is the same except for the gender. You can have people in your group, some of them get the cows, some of them get the bulls. That's the only thing that can change. Otherwise, you have to have the exact same one, two, three, four, all your choices have to be the exact same. So a couple other things to be thinking about on that too is um, this is only in the primary draw. You can only, only apply as a group in the primary draw. And youth preference does not apply to group applications. So if you have a youth, and we'll talk more about this in another video, but if you have a youth, that youth probably has a better chance of drawing a tag by applying individually. So when, um, when you apply as a group, your preference points when you enter into the draw, it's based off of whoever in the group has the lowest number of preference points. So if you've got four people out of your group that, that have five preference points, and you know, hey, they're gonna draw this tag, you, usually draws out at four preference points every year, they've been saving for five years, and they have a fifth hunter that decides to hunt with them, applies with them, but that hunter has one preference point. That whole group goes in with one preference point, and so in this instance, none of them would draw. There's another uh, thing to think about on whether this is a good opportunity or not. So um, the benefit of applying as a group, again, everybody goes or nobody goes. The other benefit is that if you got three, four, five people that are applying in the draw, all it takes is one of them being pulled randomly, right, in, in this draw cycle, whatever draw cycle, it only takes one of them to be drawn and then they all draw. So, so it, it, there's maybe a slight increase in their chances of drawing as a group. The downside to that though is say you got that same group of five hunters, they 
you know, their one of their numbers get pulled up to draw, but there's only four licenses left in the quota, right? They're not going to draw because they have five hunters in there. So sometimes hunters will will apply and they just don't understand why they didn't draw. Hopefully this clears it up a little bit. People understand that it, it works for some people, it doesn't work for other people. So Chad, do you hunt in a group? Do you use the group application? So uh, Brian, I do hunt in a group, but we do not apply with a group application. Uh, so there's some years where not all of us will draw those hunt codes that we've applied for, but those individuals still come to hunt camp. You know, there's still ways for them to participate in the experience, whether it's helping us pack out, helping us glass, helping keeping camp or cook. So they're still able to participate, just not uh, actively hunting for that hunt code. Awesome. My hunt camp does the same thing. Yeah. Yep. Great. So in this video, we've covered a lot on the group applications and hopefully we've kind of clarified a lot of those confusing aspects to it. But stick with us. We have more videos coming. We're going to be talking about youth preference. We're also going to get into sheep, goat, and moose and the weighted preference points, which are a little different. Uh, we'll also be covering hunting resources. So stick with us. We've got more videos coming.